Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we're going to be adding Pluto's moons around the Earth. So obviously we've already done Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune's moons now at this point so the only one really left to do will be Pluto's moons as um, yeah Mars's moons I mean I think it's pretty obvious what will happen with those guys so yeah we're not it's not really worth uh, doing um, doing that one but anyways Pluto's moons now this one I think this should work quite well kind of like how Neptune's moons cooperated quite well I think I think we'll see something quite similar with Pluto's moons because obviously they're all fairly close there's only one really dominant moon I think I think we're going to be in for a good show here so we're going to go ahead and uh, immediately replace Earth obviously we need to do it with Pluto this time around actually so let's see here now the only problem I could think of in this case is if Pluto's moon Charon so the largest moon if that's too close to Earth Earth could tear it to shreds that's the only thing I could think it could, could possibly go wrong here so should be interesting so there we go so we've added the moons in so there's Charon there so now if we replace back to Earth so where are we back to Earth okay now do you think that Charon so where is it there is that too close to the Earth I mean that is ridiculously close I mean that is that's really close actually <laughs> okay so I think we're gonna see some trouble here possibly because that's um that is pretty close I mean these are all of these guys are way closer than what the moon would be to the earth so this is gonna be uh this is definitely gonna be a show right so we've got Nyx Hydra uh where is it stinks and then Kevra so they're all they're the whole Pluto system of moons that's everything there interesting so if we were to add the moon in for comparison the moon would be a lot further out than any of those guys so you can see there's the moon there for comparison so yeah it's no chance really for Charon I mean sure I mean that is ridiculously close I mean look at that so without further ado I'm gonna slow down time just in case anything crazy happens here slow down time press play okay here we are right now surely this is gonna have some pretty uh pretty drastic consequences being that close to Earth I mean surely I mean that is pretty close I mean let's just go ahead and land in Brazil here I think that's probably a good area to land so let's just go ahead and land here right have a little look around upwards now it was right there so if we just go above the clouds uh, oh actually let's just stable the clouds but okay there you go so uh, clouds off so yeah that moon's uh, that's pretty close in the sky I mean there you go let's just watch it uh travel throughout the night sky as well or I should say the day sky actually we are in the daytime here so yeah that's a lot closer than what the moon is I see fragments are already being generated around Caron so that implies that Roosh limit is starting to tear that apart you can see material is coming out look oh so you can see right okay so I, I thought this would have happened right so it's too close to the earth the earth is too large Caron cannot cope with it and now it's being torn to shreds. So there you go. I thought this would have happened. Okay. Oh, whoa. Well, where are we going? Okay, that was weird. Right. So Caron, let's look at its material. So uh, where are you? Composition, uh, material loss, yeah, mass loss rate, total mass loss. You can see that's probably going to lose a bit of material there. So not looking good. You can see it's sort of more made forming a ring around the earth of material as well so let's see how this plays out over a longer period of time so will it survive will it not hang on it is radius you can see its radius has just changed there oh dear okay so it is losing it is losing material drastically now so it's too close to the dominant earth I mean this thing is just too small not strong enough to really survive that close to a planet of earth size so you can see it's uh, lagging a bit as well but I think that's to be expected I mean it is generating a lot of material so if we just keep an eye on the other moons as well how are they doing so yeah they're all looking pretty pretty comfortable really I mean it is just Charon being too close uh, to the earth here so let's see how this uh, continues to play out so we're gonna speed up time a bit more so let's see is it gonna hang on or is it gonna uh, be destroyed so it did lose some material we did see it lose material so let's see is it maybe, maybe it will hang on then I mean I don't know oh no oh Oh, there you go. It's just been it's just been shredded. <laughs> oh dear. So Charon, formerly a quite a large moon, has now been reduced to. It's still a spherical object. It is still a spherical shape, but it is nowhere near the size that it once was. So not good. 
not good in Caron's case whatsoever. We'll just go ahead and delete any particles as well. There you go. Oh, still losing material. So eventually, this moon will probably be no larger than the other moons, really. So, and the other moons, I mean, let's stink it. I mean, these guys are all just tiny little asteroids, 10 kilometers across. I mean, there's Hydra over there, how big is that? 30. So Charon is still the largest at around 200, isn't it? 262. So that's roughly the size of Mimus or Miranda now. So that is, uh, yeah, that's lost the plot big time. Now it is clearly, um, so you're still losing material and it's clearly just lost all of its uh, original say, size, really. I mean, let's, uh, let's just continue going and see if it does make any smaller. But there you are. But overall, for the whole system of moons, we can see it. This is the only ones we've done so far where every single moon stays in orbit of the Earth. Because obviously the gas giants, their moons, some of them are really, really far out. But obviously Pluto's moons, they're all, they all sit nice and close, close to Pluto. So obviously Earth has no problem keeping those at bay and keeping those um, under a firm hand. So yeah, Earth can run all of Pluto's moons absolutely no problem at all. So yeah, nothing orbiting the sun. It's all around the Earth here. So probably obviously the best... Um, the best one of these we've done, really, just for uh, consistency and keeping all the moons in place. This one's only 97 kilometers now, so it's lost even more mass and material, so not good. So, yeah, effectively, that's just a larger a larger bunch of all the asteroids now. So, poor old Charon there, that's um, being reduced to nothingness. So, let's see. I don't think it's really going to lose much more. I think it's probably lost all it had to give, really. So, yeah, not good <laughs> at all. But, yeah, there you are. So... Comparing it to the other moons now, you've got, yeah, full, I mean, we'll, we'll just line them all up, actually. You should be able to probably see them all down here. So, where are we? So, uh, Sedna, where are we? So, where is uh, Iris Ke There's Charon there. So, this is what's left of it. Uh, and then there's the other moon. So, you've got Hydra there. So, this is this is Charon. Then you've got Hydra down here. And then, obviously, um, all the other moons. Nyx. Uh, Kerberos and the Stinks one. So, yeah, Charon's not much bigger compared to what it used to be. Because obviously the original Charon would have been more, yeah, more around the size of uh, Ceres or Sedna. So somewhere, somewhere here. So, yeah, not good. So actually, we'll get a comparison of the original and then now what's left of it. So let's uh, open up the menu, see where, uh, see what we got. So, Charon, where are you? Uh, where are my blind? Where has it gone? I should, I should know where this is at this point. I've been playing this game for six years. Right, there it is. So, yeah, you can see it's lost a lot of material. I mean, that was, it's been reduced to nothing. <laughs> Earth has completely destroyed it. So, let's continue. So, yeah, it looks like that's just going to perfectly sit all in harmony now for the rest of the time, really. I mean, nothing's obviously going to change there. All the moons and orbits are in nice, nice configuration there. They're all nice and small. Earth is nice and dominant here, so there's not really any issue of anything really being lost. Um, we're going to go ahead and land in Brazil again. Just have a little look up and see if we can see what's left of it. So, where, where, where's it gone? There's the Andromeda Galaxy over there, if you look carefully. Now, where, where has it gone? Uh, labels on. Uh, where is it? I don't even... I can't even see the blooming thing now. Where, where'd it go? Am I completely blind? Where's it gone? <laughs> Ah, there it is. Okay. So, yeah, that's a lot smaller than what it used to look like. So, there it is. That's all that's left of it. So, dearie me. Okay. So, yeah, not looking good. Uh, not looking good there. Is there anything else? Uh, where, where is this other moon? I doubt they'll really be even visible, really, the other moons, because they are all um, got weird orbits. They're all uh, smaller. It says, uh, so let's just try and land in. We'll land in Australia here. South of Australia. Now let's have a look from here. Now can you see anything? So not really. Uh, no Mercury over there. There's uh, ones. Kerberos is there. Can't see a thing though. That is just you can. Oh no, you can't. Like you can see it. There it is. Okay. Obviously, you're not going to be able to pick that out very easy though. Um, anything else that's really visible? There's Nyx. Oh, Nyx and Hydra. There you go. So both of those guys. You can see both of them clearly. There's Hydra. There's Nyx. Cool. Okay, so you can see a good amount. There's Charon again. So flying by. So you can see, obviously, completely reduced to nothingness now. Not much going on there. 
Still the largest of them all though, but yeah, a lot smaller than it once was. So there you go. Okay, cool. But yeah, there we are. So that does it for what if Pluto's moons orbited Earth. So that's the only instance really where we've added some moons to Earth and Earth has actually destroyed one itself by being too close to the Earth. So there we are. So obviously with the gas giant moons, they're obviously a lot further out just due to the gas giant's size. They wouldn't be able to be that close to the gas giant because it would be inside the gas giant. I mean, for instance, if... Um, we were to throw in, uh, say, Uranus or uh, something here. So ne Neptune as well. No moon could orbit at Charon's distance around Neptune because Neptune is bigger than that size. So, yeah, pretty, uh, pretty crazy stuff. So this is the only moon that would have been... This This is the closest moon we've had to Earth in this whole series. So, yeah, pretty cool. But yeah, other than that, I mean, the whole Pluto system works um, works nicely together. Look, we can run it nice and fast. Absolutely no problems here. I mean, all the moons are nicely kept together by Earth's gravity. So, looking good. I mean, no, I don't see any any issues there. I mean, that is going to run perfectly well for a long, long time. So, there we are, guys. That does it for what if Pluto's moons orbited the Earth. So, yeah, a little different to the other episodes. We're actually having Roosh Limit tear up uh, one of the moons. I mean, we haven't had that with any of them, so... Yeah, pretty cool, but obviously Charon, Pluto's moons are a lot closer to the parent planet than any of the other moons are, just because Pluto's so small. So, pretty good stuff, but yeah, there we go. So I think that kind of does it for this mini-series, really, is we've done all of the objects really necessary. I mean, I'm not going to do Mars's ones, because, I mean, they're just going to have the same result as this, just without Charon um, in the mix, so they'll be quite quite a boring ones. There's not really much point uh, featuring those, but yeah, we've done all of the uh, gas giants, we've done Pluto, but I think that, yeah, that's all the moon systems we can really do, actually, so I really hope you guys have enjoyed this mini-series, and yeah, if you have any more ideas, some more what-if videos, let us know down below in the comments, and yeah, guys, it's going to go for 50 likes on today's video, subscribe for more, helps in a journey to 24,000 subscribers, and yeah, with that all said and done, make sure you have a great day, stay safe out there, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.